When I first started playing No Rest for a Wicked, I really didn't have a plan in regards to my build. I just tried stuff, experimented, and went for a playstyle that I found appealing, which meant coming up with a pretty uneven stat spread, where a lot of my stats are wasted because I invested into things like dexterity and intelligence that I didn't end up using because I settled on a strength build. And it should be noted that I'm not the best at Souls-like games. In fact, in some cases, I'm pretty darn bad at them. It took me over 100 tries to kill the Abyss Watchers, but I did find a build, ended up making the bosses relatively easy. You still have to learn patterns, you do still have to dodge some things. In fact, I haven't killed the Echo Knight yet because I'm still learning his patterns. Once you do that, I found most enemies and even most bosses to be fairly easy. And I did it all using a sword and board build that can be put together and played throughout the entire story with just gear available from the vendor, making it very, very, very accessible to, at least at a moment, every player. And so today, I wanted to share that. Also, in the future, I might make some crazy builds, min-max stuff, and get into more endgame things. It's probably going to come when there's more content or on the full release, so get subscribed for that, because I'm definitely going to be following the game as development continues. You get a lot of cool gear out in the world. Something like this, or, if you're really lucky, something like this. The problem is, a lot of it isn't very deterministic. Because it's random loot, I might not get the same drops that you do. So, for consistency, I wanted this build to be something that someone else could repeat. Someone can follow this guide and get similar results to me. Thus, I decided to stick to things available from a vendor. So for the weapon, I went with a blood-rusted sword. Realistically, any of these are decent options. None of these weapons are terrible, but the blood-rusted sword feels really good, and it's easy to play because you can wear a shield. So, second piece is the light shield. From there, until level 11, unfortunately, you're going to have to use gear that you find out in the world. But once you reach level 11, you can use the Sacrament Guardian Armor. This is a mesh set, so it provides pretty significant defense while not being absurdly overweight. Now, if you wanted to build into some specialized things, you could do a Talwar, a one-handed curved sword. You'd have to go strength dex instead of a pure strength that I went. And you could also use the bard entry upon reaching level 21 if you go the pure strength route. This is a really nice medium shield, as you can just buy it from a vendor, and it has great defense. But for now, let's start talking about stats. Don't mind the fact that I'm level 12, I just happened to level up while testing the build. So, in terms of stat priorities, first thing, 22 strength. This way you'll be able to use a wide variety of gear. Now, technically you only need 10 for the Blood Rusted Straight Sword, but this will give you the ability to use tier two weapons that you happen to find out in the world. Also, the more points you put in, the higher the damage bonus. So it's not like those points are wasted. Ultimately, I didn't end up opting to put points into stamina. This is going to be a personal taste thing. A couple points here aren't too bad, but they're not necessary either. This is because you can be very stamina efficient when playing a build like this. Something you do need a lot of, though, is equip load. Because I want to have the normal dodge roll. I don't want to be slow rolling. I want to be regular rolling. So. I need quite a bit of carry weight, that way I can wear mesh gear. This is important because mesh has a higher overall defensive value. That's why I have 329 armor, or even more when I'm blocking by holding my shield up. So 20-ish quip load and 22 strength is the core of your build. Then focus to unleash your runes more efficiently. You get 20 points for the first couple, 15 after that. And I put the rest into health, that way, when I get hit by the boss, I don't instantly die. So the idea here is be reasonably tanky. Coming into my inventory, you can see my gear. So this assumes that you've used one Plague Icker to unlock an extra ring slot. I went with a Rune Ring and a Stone Tusk Ring, just because these were the first two rings that I got by coming over here to Greenwich and checking his stock. He sells rings. I happen to get those two, and as you can see, it's pretty random what you'll get. Unfortunately, rings are the only part of a build that isn't fully deterministic. Now for the weapon, I did roll it a couple times because I wanted something good. Ultimately, having the generic damage increase is really nice. For my main rune, it's spin, which comes on the weapon, then I have fire throw. These recently got nerfed, it was 50 focus, now it's 75, but it's really nice to have a ranged option, especially when you can throw a shield or I guess hold the shield up and throw your weapon. Then 
I also got this, which is five stamina on blocked attacks. Before I rolled this shield, I didn't even know this was a mod. It's really, really good, and it lets you block almost infinitely. Now, you'll still lose a little bit of health on block, which is why I have the gain health on block infusion from a bloodstone. But overall, I'm really happy with how this came out. Then for the rest, I was prioritizing getting things like health, gain health on damage taken, and item weight decreased. Because if you get enough item weight decrease, then you can wear all of this heavy armor with a lower carry load rating. If you can't fit all of these things, I suggest a leather chest piece that'll be significantly lighter than the Sacrament Guardian's armor, and then go with Sacrament Guardians in as many other slots as possible for the mesh and the defenses. When I went back and tested things, I went all the way through to the last boss of the story just using vendor gear. And overall, I had a really easy time. I'm sure part of that was because I had more experience than when I went through the first time. I knew what tells to expect and what boss moves were the most dangerous. But I also found just being able to hold up that shield was a massive, massive boon. The first time through, I'd alternated between a one-handed sword and a two-handed sword, so I wasn't really in the habit of holding up a shield even though I had one equipped. It's important to note that generally speaking, you don't get any defensive benefit from having shield but not actually using it. The armor and additional stats come when you're raising your shield and when you're blocking. Just be aware your stamina does not regenerate when you're doing this, so it's not always going to be perfect. The advantage of having either 22 or 42 strength is it allows you to equip tier two and tier three strength gear respectively. I'm sure you could also go full plate and go heavy load. After all, if you just block everything, you don't really need to dodge, but I found the normal roll felt a lot better. I also found that when I was heavy, even though I could block, if I didn't actually have life gain on block, I was taking just a little bit too much damage and burning excessive amounts of food. So I could see it working well with health regen. Now next up is a boss fight. This is the last story boss, and this is how the build handles it. Overall, I think I played it pretty decently, but I definitely didn't play it perfectly. So you'll absolutely be seeing some flaws here. You'll also be seeing me dodging around a little bit. You can block the boss's attacks, but not all of them should be blocked especially his multi-hit stuff, you're just much better off dodging away. And also when it comes to things like the grab, you're better off just not being in front of him. If you want to know more about that, I do have a full boss guide that goes into way more detail that you can watch after this. One thing that was especially handy though is having the throw rune. So fire throw comes from a climber's pick. If you can't get it, or if you don't happen to get it because that's not fully deterministic, use damage surge instead. Damage Surge is sold by Eleanor, therefore everyone will have access to it. And if you reach this boss before level 11 and therefore can't put on the Sacrament's Guardian armor, don't worry too, too much. Farm a little out in the world, get up to level 11, you'll find the fight much easier. Or alternatively, you could just put on some tier 1 armor and upgrade it to tier 2 via vendor materials over at Fillmore Smithy. Most of the time, my goal is dodge whatever the boss does, then smack him from behind. This way, I have the best chance to get in my damage window without the boss being able to effectively retaliate. Now, if a boss is doing something super dangerous, the best thing to do is get really far away. But that doesn't mean I can't deal damage. You can still deal damage with throwables or by using your fire throw rune. By the way, if you get an ice throw rune, it's even better. Ice throw is super awesome, but honestly pretty rare. As you can see, there are times where I do take some hits. I take some damage. Luckily, my armor rating's high enough that I'm able to tank it. Then I dodge backwards, eat some food, recover my health, maybe give some fire throw just to keep my damage up and continue fighting the boss. Now here, I think I did it pretty cleanly, but if it takes you a few tries, don't be discouraged. Sometimes that's just gonna happen. Look at the mistakes you made last time. Try to do better in the next attempt. When it comes to dealing with dangerous enemies, remember, you are holding a shield and you can block. Some attacks, it's much better to dodge since they will break your poise and leave you staggered. But so long as the attack isn't likely to do so, an enemy's strike will rebound off of your shield, temporarily interrupting them. So block when you can, learn which attacks are light attacks, which attacks are heavy attacks, block the light ones, dodge the heavy ones. Do this and consistently try to hit enemies from behind and overall, you'll have a pretty good time with the build. Plus, you have enough armor rating that even if you make a mistake and get hit a couple times, you should be able to roll away, heal up, and continue the fight. In terms of consumables, I recommend a focus potion. This way you can use more fire throw and also specials in general. 
Then for food, most of the time it's just going to be whatever you have materials for. However, as you approach endgame and as you have more consistent stuff, especially once you unlock higher tier recipes, there's a few I can recommend. Mushroom and meat curry or fruit pie will increase your maximum stamina, allowing you to attack more without having to wait for it to come back. Then when fighting bosses, use either fish skewer or fish salad, as they restore both health and focus to unleash your runes more often. Last up, consider using vegetable cake as a buff. It's an excellent late game food and it gives you 10% damage. But now I want to show you my first character. Because I think my first character, who's level 30, is a little bit more reflective of what you'd have if you started trying to min-max or push further into the end game. Though also, when I put that character together, I knew a lot less than I do now, so the gear absolutely isn't perfect. Now, if you want to min-max and take on the Serum Crucible, this is what your character might look like by level 30. First up, for the stat spread, you'll notice that now I have a lot more health and a lot more strength. I also have a lot of stamina, which honestly was a mistake. Plenty of that should have gone into equip load, which would have allowed me to wear heavier armor. You can also see I have things like a little dex, a little int, a little faith. That's because early on I was experimenting and trying different things, and I thought I was going to be a dex build for a bit. Then I ended up settling on strength after swapping from a hybrid weapon. So my stat spread certainly isn't perfect. In terms of gear, it's also not perfect, but it's pretty good. I'm still using a blood rusted sword. This one happened to roll really, really well. I like the cold damage because it chills enemies. Then I'm using a barred entry just because I can buy a lot of these from a vendor and I ended up getting one with both health on block and focus on block. Recently, they nerfed the gain on deal damage stats, but they didn't nerf the gain on block. And uh, fingers crossed that they won't nerf it because I really like being able to be rewarded for holding up a shield. You can also get the focus on block. You can get, I think it's stamina, focus, or health. Ultimately, health is the most important. Stamina the second most, focus third. And the stamina refill on parry, really nice if you can pull off parries. It's going to take some practice. Then for my second weapon, I'm using a gnarled saw. Big old two-handed greatsword. This thing is really nice because of the overpower rune, which is default, but I mostly just throw it at stuff. Because who doesn't want to throw their gigantic saw at things? And yes, it does scale with a higher damage on a two-handed weapon. And I've got a bunch of mesh armor. I also have three ring slots now. The Band of Calmness gives me a lot more focus to bank and unleash rune attacks. The Fierce Ring is okay. It's armor and damage, but I should probably replace it with something else. And the Agility Ring is really nice because it makes attacks super stamina efficient and it gives you a whole bunch of speed. Then for the Pants, the all res is actually surprisingly nice. A lot of enemies in the Serum Crucible do deal elemental damage. The equip load gain is good. It means I can wear heavier armor. No real downside for the durability. Then I've got some health on block, stamina on damage dealt. A little bit of stagger resistance doesn't hurt. Chance to gain health on damage taken. Damage dealt on damage taken. Honestly, my chest piece isn't very good right now. I should absolutely replace this, especially since I really don't need the stamina increase. And then focus regeneration, which I was trying it out. It's honestly not that good. So my helmet isn't particularly good either. And I could absolutely replace it with something better. These are more about the solid stats on a tier three item, as opposed to the actual rolls being very good. But hey, focus regen isn't terrible. It means that while I was talking, all my focus came back and I could use another rune attack. Like the overpowering attack that is used called limit break. Massive combo does tons of damage. Really fun to use, but since it's a multi-hit combo, enemies do get to counter sometimes. Use it with caution. I'm feeling pretty comfortable that I'll be able to take down the Echo Knight soon. I just have to get the timing down a little bit better, keep my distance, and, you know, rely on my throwables. This counts as a throwable, right? I hope so. Now, in terms of gameplay, it's pretty much the same as before. Raise your shield to block light attacks, dodge around enemies to avoid heavy attacks, or, if you're feeling comfortable, parry and counterattack. There's one main difference. Instead of having the fire throw on my straight sword, I have my fire throw on the gnarled saw. This is simply because on the two-handed weapon, it deals vastly more damage per point of focus spent. And also because I've been using a subpar rune on my main weapon, on my original character, and I don't feel like taking another weapon all the way up to tier three. Now, so far I've had some pretty good attempts against the Echo Knight. When I unleash my focus, I do a massive amount of damage, 
but usually what happens is I get just a little too greedy and I get caught in the crossfire. If I'm able to raise my shield in block in time, it's not a big deal, but I'm also not the best of that. So as I continue to practice and refine the build, I do think I'll be able to take him down. What I may actually do is level up my second character now that I've made the video so that I have a better stat spread, because I think with a better stat spread, especially with some extra carry weight that would allow me to wear plate armor and a little extra health, I should be completely fine to down the Echo Knight. A lot of these fights really are about patience, and they certainly look super intimidating, but it's pretty cool that you can actually block their attacks, at least if you're careful. Some of the multi-hit combos you absolutely shouldn't try to block. With that said, I'm curious, what gear have you been experimenting with in No Rest for the Wicked, and are you going to swap to a sword and board build? Let me know about some of the cooler things you found, either in terms of random weapons or builds that you put together yourself. If this video goes well, there's a good chance that I'm going to be doing more builds and weapon showcases, so guys subscribe for that and watch out for future videos. With that said, if you're looking for more No Rest for the Wicked guides, maybe check out my attribute guide or my item enhancement guide that should help set you up for this character. Those will both be up in the card and down below. And before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. Link to support is down below. Thanks to everyone who watched to the end. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.